Father in heaven, we want to thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you for the blessings of the day so far. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior. We thank you for the salvation provided in Jesus Christ. We commit ourselves to you. We commit to him. We ask for more of the grace that is needed to make us children of God perfectly reproduced in his image so that he can come to claim us as his own. We thank you and we praise you. We commit ourselves to you this evening. Bless, guide, and direct in the proceedings. May your word be clear to us. May Jesus be high and lifted up. And may we rejoice in the salvation provided so expensively at so great cost. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, um, so briefly, I want to turn to Romans chapter 1, verses 16 and 17. Romans 1, 16 and 17. Romans 1, 16 and 17. Um, could somebody come to the mic and read it for us, please? Romans 1, 16 and 17. I'm going to ask a few questions. Romans 1, 16 and 17. For I, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness revealed from faith to faith. Sorry, sorry, let me say that again. For therein is the righteousness of God revealeth from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. All right, thank you. For, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, a number of things there. The apostle tells us, this is the apostle Paul, right? He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Now, in, in those days, um, you know, even, even, even today, there is a strong current of anti-gospel sentiment. You, 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 you preach the gospel, you say that you believe in the Bible, you believe that the Bible is the word of God, and you come in for ridicule. There are people who say, well, you, you have to be mad, there's something wrong with you. That book was written years ago, centuries ago. Um, it was written by men. How can you say it is the word of God and so on? And when Paul preached the gospel, when he preached from the Bible as it was, and, and the Bible then was essentially the Old Testament, although the Apostle Peter showed that the, in his time the New Testament was also becoming part of the Scripture. And when Paul preached the gospel, he received the ridicule that existed in the time then. And yet Paul was able to say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And therefore Paul knew something, that the scoffers didn't know. He says, for the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The power of God to save. The gospel is the power of God to save, to save sinners. Now, how does God save? How does God save? First of all, he shows us our sinfulness. He shows us that as sinners, we all descended from Adam. We are all 
sinful because of Adam. The Bible says that um, in Adam all have sinned and in Adam all day, the scripture says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we are all sinners. The Bible makes it clear that we are all sinners. But the Bible also makes it clear that God has done something about the sin problem. What has God done? The Bible says he sent Jesus Christ. He said he was made like the seed of Abraham. He, he, in other words, Jesus Christ came as one of us. He lived as one of us. He experienced the sin. Listen carefully. He experienced the sin that pulls upon us. Sorry, the, the temptation. In other words, he didn't sin, but he experienced the pull of sin that pulls upon all of us. And yet, the Bible says, yet he was without sin. So he lived a sinless life so that we can live a, sin, a sinless life as well. And he wasn't, it wasn't just that he was our example in living a sinless life. That victory that he gained over sin, he gives to us. So we receive the victory that he gained. So he saves us, God has saved us through the life of Jesus Christ, through the, 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 the coming of Jesus into our sinful fallen flesh, living a victorious life, and, that, and then giving that victory to us. And then he died in our place. He died that we might not have to die, and he was resurrected that we can be resurrected unto eternal life. That's how God saves so the Apostle Paul says then that he's not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation to, the Jew, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Why, why, why is he not ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Because it is God's power to save. The gospel is God's power to save. God saves by the power of the gospel, and it is the, the power of God to salvation to who? To whom? Now, we are told that Jesus Christ died for all men. His salvation is for all men. He saved all men, and yet, it is the power of God to salvation to who? So who are the persons that actually receive the salvation? Those who believe. To him that believe. And another point that Paul makes is that it is to everyone that believes, to the Jew and also to the Greek. In other words, every human being out. Again, in that time, they had a problem explaining to Jews that salvation was not only for Jews, but for Gentiles as well. There's a problem that existed in those days. It probably still exists in our day to some extent. Some Jews believed, many Jews believed, in fact, that salvation was only for the Jews and not for the Gentiles. And that's why Jesus had to spend a lot of time while he was here on this earth, while he was with the disciples, demonstrating to them, giving them object lessons in understanding that salvation was not only for the Jews, but also for the Gentiles. For instance, in the instance with the Syrophoenician woman, um, one gospel calls, it the, calls her the Syrophoenician Phoenician woman. Another one calls her the Canaanite woman. And Jesus was in this particular part of the country. And this woman came to Jesus and said, My daughter is afflicted with the devil. Save her. That's what the woman came and told Jesus. What did Jesus do? How did Jesus respond? Did he respond immediately? The narrative tells us that Jesus behaved as if the woman didn't exist. He behaved as if he didn't see her, as if she wasn't around. And what did the disciples do? They said, well, send her away because she's being a nuisance. But we are told that Jesus was doing two things. One, he was testing the woman's faith. Two, he was also trying to give a message, a lesson to the disciples. So he wanted to see how the disciples would react. And they reacted as he expected. Send her away. In other words, Jesus does not have time for people like you. He is come to save the Jews. And in fact, Jesus said that. He said, I am not come, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the disciples said, good, you see, woman, you see what he's saying? He's not come for you. He's come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But did the woman give up? No. Because this woman had gotten a message that all of us are to get. 
that Jesus does not turn away sinners. He does not turn away people that need him. She understood that and she wasn't going to give up. The disciples needed to be taught the lesson that salvation is for everyone, not only Jews, but for Gentiles as well. So the woman did not go away. Jesus said, well, I am not sent but unto the lordship of the house of Israel. So the disciples and everybody else got a message, well, this woman should really leave because she's just wasting Jesus' time. But the woman would not give up. She came back to Jesus and said, Lord, my daughter is sick of a devil. I want her saved. Help me. So Jesus got really serious then. Some people say that he insulted her. And this is what he said. He said, it is not proper to take the food that belongs to the children and give it to the dogs. That's what Jesus told her. So obviously, if you look at it that way, he was calling her a dog, right? In other words, you are not a Jew. What I have is for Jews. You are a dog. It is not for you. He was calling her a dog. Anyhow. Well, if that was me or you, we probably would have gotten offended and said, he, see, he calling me a dog. He ain't a good. He said that he's a savior, but he really, we would have left, right? Go along and tell somebody something bad about Jesus. Look how we treat him people. And there's a lot of people nowadays that look at that and say, look, this is how Jesus treats people. But Jesus was, he was not only now sending a message to the disciples, he was going to demonstrate the faith of this woman. So how did the woman respond? Jesus said, well, you know, you really can't take the food that I have for my children and give it to the dogs. How did the woman respond? She said, well, I, I agree with you, Lord, but the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the table. So she was saying, look, all right, so I'm a dog, but I want the crumbs that fall from the table. What she knew is that this bread that Jesus offered was so good that whatever was in the bread was also in the crumbs. The goodness of the Lord in the bread and in the crumbs. She said, all right, I just want the crumbs. Jesus said, well, there's nothing that I can do. There's nothing that anybody can do to turn this woman away. She, he said, great is your faith, woman. Go your way. You have your wish. And from that moment, her daughter was made whole. Jesus says, that is the faith that I want to see. A faith that holds on. A faith that perseveres. A faith that knows that no matter what the circumstances, circumstances appear to be, God is good and he will not turn away anyone that holds on to him. That faith. And that's the faith that he wants us to have. And that's the message that Jesus has given to all of us. The salvation that he has is not only for the Jews, it is for the Gentiles. It is indeed for all men. And the faith that was demonstrated by that woman is to be demonstrated by all men. So there's the point then. The salvation that God has provided has been provided in Jesus Christ. And how do we receive it? By faith. By grace are you saved through faith. It is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. The salvation that God has provided is to be received through faith. The faith, so the salvation is the gift of God. Do we manufacture the faith? No. The faith also is the gift of God. That faith is given to us by God. And last time we said that faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing what? The word of God. So Jesus says then, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because when you find the gospel, you find the word of God. Because it is God's power to save. Reading that book, reading the Bible, saves people. Now there are people, as I said today, there are, as I said already, there are people today that disparage the Bible. Paul says it is the power of God to save. Whoever reads this word finds faith and finds the power of God that saves. Now, I am told that there were some Two, two, two young Western men, two young Westerners, I'm going to finish in a minute, traveling in a foreign country. There were, it was um, 
I think somewhere in maybe Papua New Guinea or uh, those, um, in those days, in those countries, um, it was fairly rough. I'm told that, we are told that um, one group of tribesmen used to, um, used to drink rice, rice rum or rice, whatever, whatever the, whenever they planted the rice and harvested the rice, rather than use it for food, the most thing they used to do is make liquor from it. So they used to drink rice, liquor, get drunk, have all kind of sexual debauchery, and die at a very early age. And one group of them was so bad that the British authorities um, circled them off, cut them off from everybody else, and left them to die. So well, the only thing we can do for these people is leave them to die out, because otherwise they are going to be harmful to themselves and everybody else, so they left them to die. But some other tribesmen, some of their fellow tribesmen from down the mountains, had received the gospel from Ernest Presswood, a young um, white man from, he lived between um, U.S. and Canada, or I think he was originally from England. Ernest Presswood, he used to call him Hurry Hurry, or Tuan Change. He was always in a hurry to move. He never stopped to carry the gospel to any, even the remotest parts of the jungle, no matter how bad the tribesmen were. And some Christian, some Christian tribesmen who had received the gospel from Ernest Presswood went into that area that had been cordoned off, preached the gospel to them, and transformed them. And when a visiting um, delegation came to look for them to see if they had died out, they had changed completely and were now living according to the gospel. That's because of the fearlessness and the faith, not only of a Westerner, but now of tribesmen who had received the gospel. What the, what, what the best missionaries did is that when they taught the gospel to those who received it, they also taught them to work for their fellow men. And these people trained by Presswood went into um, that part of the jungle to their fellow tribesmen, brought the gospel to them. Now, so in one of those regions, no, a similar kind of region where, um, let's say the, I don't, don't want to call it the wrong name, anyhow, some two young Eng Englishmen were traveling in one of these areas, and they came across some tribes men. And they saw them reading the Bible. They saw the, the, the tribes men with the Bible, and they were reading it, and they were in John and so on. <laughs> and when the two Westerners saw them, they said, wait, you all reading that book? Man, we finished with that book in our, in our part of the world long ago. That, that book is a waste of time. Nobody reads that book anymore. Listen to what the tribes men told them. Tribes men said, no, listen, listen, listen carefully. If we were not reading this book, you all would have been eaten a long time ago. In other words, <laughs> these men had been cannibals. And the Lord had sent the message to them. It had changed them. And the foolish Westerners that felt that they were too advanced for the Bible did not know that it was that same Bible that had saved their lives by transforming these men who had accepted the gospel. And that's why, that's why the Apostle Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it's what? The power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believeth. Those who believe. So God has given us the salvation. He has given us the gospel. And he has given us the faith that we may believe. And uh, it is up to us then. In the word of God. You see, when we read the word of God, we come across our sinfulness. We see how bad we are. In the word of God, we come across the love of God that while we were yet sinners, he sent his son to die for us. And in the word of God, we see that in Christ, God has provided a complete salvation. And in the word of God, we find the faith that enables us to accept that salvation. Verse 17 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The righteousness. You see, it is the power of God to save because in it, the righteousness of God is revealed. When we see the righteousness of God, we see how beautiful God is. We see what a wonderful person he is. 
And as we behold his righteousness, we also see something else. We see our own sinfulness. And as we see his righteousness, as we see his, sin, we see his righteousness, as we see our sinfulness, we also see what he has done for us, and we are able to lay hold on that salvation by faith, claim the promises, and be transformed fully into his likeness. And the, the apostle said, when he was preaching, he said to the Jews, this message is not only for you, but for your children and to everyone who is called. So the salvation that we have from God is for us and for our children. Let us teach them too. God loves them and he has a place for us, for us and for them in his kingdom. So we're going to stop there. We're going to pray. And then we're going to hand over to Elder Leacock. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the mercy, the grace, the salvation provided for us. Amen. We thank you that this salvation is provided in Jesus. We thank you that it is found in your word where we see that the gospel is your power to save because it reveals your righteousness. It reveals our sinfulness and it reveals the love that sent Christ to die even while we were yet sinners. And it reveals the faith that is ours, by which we take hold upon the salvation provided. Help us to trust you, depend on you, and allow you in and through us to work and to will and to do of your good pleasure, both for us and our children. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.